Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to My Financial Focus. Today I'm going to be doing an intrinsic value analysis of McDonald's. McDonald's is going to be announcing their earnings tomorrow, so I thought that today would be a great time to figure out if McDonald's presents a good buying opportunity from a value investing perspective. So I'm going to be looking into their financial statements, and then I'm also going to finish the video off by doing a discounted cash flow analysis using some of the different growth metrics that analysts are providing to the public to figure out if McDonald's presents a good buying opportunity at their current price or if they're overvalued or undervalued relative to their current market valuation. So the first thing that I want to do before getting into the actual financial statements is just talk a little bit about what McDonald's actually does and how they produce all of their revenues primarily. And before I do that, just be sure to leave a like on the video. It helps the algorithm out and helps this video get recommended to more people across YouTube. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Right here, we can see they talk about their business model. And I'll zoom in here so that's easier to read for everybody who's watching this. And we can see that they talk primarily about how they're primarily, I just said primarily like three times, but they're a franchisee business with 39,000 restaurants at the year end 2020. And about 36,521 of those restaurants are franchised, which makes McDonald's a 93% franchisee business. So they are definitely looking more to license their brand out and allow other entrepreneurs to capitalize off of the franchisee model, which is also a benefit to them because it provides them with a competitive advantage of being able to allow their franchisees to innovate and then test those innovations in those franchise restaurants. And then if they work and they develop a lot of traction with customers, they can then implement them into their main restaurants. Their conventional franchise arrangement is, as we can see right here, basically it just allows them to secure a long-term lease about 20 years for the land and the building for a franchise restaurant location. The franchisee pays for all of the equipment, the signs, the seatings, and the decor. And then after the 20-year lease is up, McDonald's retains ownership of the building and the land, and then they can enter into a new lease agreement with the existing franchisee, or they can find a new franchisee, or they can just sell the location altogether. So we can see that from this business model that they're just really leveraging their real estate capacities by pretty much putting almost all of the expenses on the franchisee while still being able to collect rent and royalties from the person or the entrepreneur who is running that franchise restaurant. And then after the 20 year lease is up and they're done collecting rent and royalties from this franchise restaurant for that time period, they still own the land and the building underneath the restaurant. And so they're able to profit from the appreciation of these real estate assets. And on top of that, they're able to then sell this location or enter a new contract with the previous franchisee or a new franchisee. And so this is primarily one of the main growth strategies when it comes to McDonald's in dealing with the competition. They're primarily not really in the like high-end restaurant business, obviously, more in the casual, convenient, fast food service restaurant business. And so their primary growth strategies in regards to this is basically just by continuing to enhance their digital offerings, and they're also increasing their delivery capacity. So they're starting to deliver food to people who order different McDonald's meals or whatever they want from McDonald's. And then lastly, they're also increasing the amount of drive through locations for their McDonald's restaurants, which was one of the primary essential things that allowed them to continue their business during 2020 with all the events that were occurring. Because of all the global lockdowns, their restaurant business was heavily imp impacted, but because of their drive through locations, their revenues were a bit subsidized by the increase in drive through activity with their restaurants. And if we keep scrolling down here, they go into detail about some of the risks and different things that their business is facing in the future. And the main risks that I'll go into a little bit more when we look into their financial statements are that <clears throat> they are a pretty highly leveraged company. So if we go to the first financial statement on page 31 right here, we can see that right here they show that their financial position has a positive asset to debt ratio, but 
according to their balance sheet that's not really true as we can see right here their total shareholders equity is actually a total shareholders deficit of about 7.8 billion dollars and the reason why that is is because mcdonald's is taking on a lot of debt to not only increase the amount of restaurants that they own but also to buy back shares of their stock and so into the future one of the main risks that we could be looking at with mcdonald's is that an increase in interest rates over like the next five to ten years could have a significant effect on their earnings and their share price moving forward and also any limitations in additional borrowings in the future could potentially limit their ability to reduce the amount of shares outstanding in the market and that would obviously have a negative impact on their earnings per share growth which has been pretty heavily positively impacted by the fact that they've been buying back shares over this course of time by borrowing money in order to buy back shares and if they're not able to do that then their earnings per share as well as their stock growth could definitely have a negative impact and then also in terms of like a macroeconomic perspective the continuation of the global lockdown measures could obviously have a negative impact on their business and also the deterioration of their brand image could have a negative impact on their future revenues on page 43 we see their first real like consolidated statement which is their consolidated statement of income and we can see right here that their total revenues for 2020 were obviously negatively impacted and they actually declined from about 21 billion in 2019 to 19 billion in 2020 and that came primarily as a result of a decrease in revenues from their company operated restaurants as well as from their franchisee restaurants but we can see that over the last couple of years as well as in the financial statement that i just showed we could see that the sales from their company-owned restaurants have actually been declining even before the global lockdown measures went into place, but the revenues from their franchise restaurants have been increasing over this time period until 2020 when the global lockdown measures went into place and their revenues were negatively impacted as a result, and so that obviously had a negative impact in their top line. And then in regards to their bottom line, we can see that it increased from 2018 to 2019, but then from 2019 to 2020, it decreased from about $6 billion to about $4.7 billion. Then on page 45, we see their balance sheet. And this is a little bit of what I was talking about earlier when I said that their business is highly leveraged and is being mainly financed by debt as opposed to equity. We can see their total assets come out to be about $52 billion, but then their total, what is it, their total shareholders equity is at a deficit and that's mainly because of the fact that their long-term debt and long-term lease liabilities total to about what looks to be like 48 billion dollars and then that's not even including the six billion from their total current liabilities so we can see that their business is highly leveraged and like I said before, if they aren't able to continue borrowing at this rate in order to increase their earnings per share growth, then that's going to have a negative impact on the returns that their shareholders experience in the future. And then lastly, right here, we have their consolidated statement of cash flows. Right here, we see that their cash provided by operations decreased from 2019 at about $8 billion to $6.2 billion in 2020. Then they invested pretty substantially as they usually do in capital expenditures. It was a a little bit down from 2019 when it was 2.3 billion dollars of capital expenditures but then in 2020 it was 1.6 billion so they had a net cash outflow from investing activities and then lastly in their financing activities we can see that they raised a lot of money from long-term refinances of about 5.5 billion dollars which is something that they've been doing from 2018 and 2019 as well and then that was more they raised more money from debt as opposed to what they paid back in debt of about 2.4 billion dollars and so for their total financing activities there was a net cash outflow but then for their cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year there was an increase from about three point there was an increase from about 898 million to about 3.4 billion in 2020. And so to end the video off, as always, I'm going to do a discounted cash flow analysis to figure out what the intrinsic value per share of McDonald's is. And so to do that, I'm first going to get a growth rate from Yahoo Finance right here. 
we can see that if I scroll down, their growth rate that analysts predict for the next five years is about 21.60%. And then for growth rates years six through 10, I'm just going to be conservative and say that it'll slow down to about 10%. But these are obviously assumptions, and that's one of the disadvantages of the discounted cash flow model. For year one's free cash flow, I'm going to just get that value from TradingView right here. We can see that their free cash flow for the trailing 12 months was $6.65 billion. For net cash minus net debt, we can see on their balance sheet right here on Yahoo Finance that they have total cash of about $4.31 billion and total debt of $48.82 billion. So that ends up being a total debt position on their balance sheet as opposed to a net cash position. Stock ticker MCD and then shares outstanding came out to be about 747 million shares. And so after that, we can see that their intrinsic value per share based on these growth rate assumptions comes out to be about $171 per share with a 30% margin of safety of $120 per share and a 50% margin of safety of $85 per share, which would put McDonald's stock price at the moment at an overvaluation in comparison to what this discounted cash flow model is saying. But I would definitely love to know what everybody watching this video thinks about McDonald's. Is it a buy at the current price or are these growth rates correct or is McDonald's going to continue growing at a faster rate in the future? Also, let me know what is the general consensus surrounding how much debt McDonald's has on their balance sheet. Obviously, them being a real estate business, real estate investors tend to carry more debt as opposed to equity in their investments just so that they can grow faster but obviously if there is some sort of a macroeconomic like recession or something that happens and interest rates maybe increase in the future or any other like macroeconomic event that has a negative impact on people who are holding on to a lot of debt then mcdonald's could obviously suffer so like comment subscribe all that good stuff and i'll see everyone in the next video